Hi guys, in this video I just wanted to talk a little bit about the recent uh, topic of plasma toroid it has been discussed quite actively in the high voltage community of YouTube and uh, I wanted to share the information that I have about this type of discharge uh, well, as far as I am concerned uh, this discharge actually has been uh, studied quite extensively and it's been described in scientific literature numerous times uh, and it's it's not that new of a phenomenon it's been studied uh, from the beginning of the 20th century uh, first time when I learned about this discharge was from this uh, book in uh, Russian of course I don't believe it's been published in English it's uh, been published in 1953 its author is uh, Kopcov and it's called Elektrichtske явления в газах и вакууме, which means electrical phenomena in gases and vacuum. In this book, there's a whole separate chapter about uh, high frequency discharges, and uh, it has a sub chapter about the so-called electrodless ring discharge. And uh, electrodless ring discharge is uh, actually exactly what the plasma toroid is. It's uh, its scientific name. Um, it has here quite a lot of interesting information it has quite a lot of references uh, those references are to the papers from 1928 1929 by none other than jj thompson a prominent british physicist and uh, according to what i've read uh, he discovered that this charge at least in 1901 or even earlier because uh, publications from that time are uh, sometimes quite hard to find hey let's say post edit you know inclusion i have uh, been looking on scholar a bit more and it seems like this discharge project was actually discovered even earlier in 1884 by johannes hittor if i pronounce that right it was he was a german physicist who's uh, worked quite extensively with cathode rays and uh, evacuated discharges in evacuated vessels. One could wonder how were they able to study such discharges before the invention of vacuum tubes. And uh, the answer is quite simple. They used uh, like past excitation with uh, high frequency coils like Ruhmkorff coils or Tesla coils. and uh, the discharges are all the same. They, the properties don't change because of the impulse excitation. So, Thompson and uh, Hitorf studied the ring discharge at uh, high frequency excitation. And uh, from about 1920s to 1930s, and this discharge has been studied at uh, you know continuous wave excitation from vacuum tubes. Um, according to this book, now there's lots of interesting stuff in here, but uh, for example, it says here the glow that you can see in the plasma ball before the ring discharge ignites is uh, actually caused by an electric field of the coil because uh, the voltages on the coil are quite high. And the ring discharge itself is uh, caused, of course, by the magnetic field which uh, changes over time with high frequency and induces an electric field in the form of uh, closed loops uh, which uh, breaks down the gas and uh, ignites the ring discharge if you integrate the electric field along those loops you can get an equivalent of an ignition voltage and uh, here this book has even uh, well analogs of passion curves uh, for ring discharge uh, you can see it's uh, quite similar to the ones you get at uh, DC you have this minimum at some pressure and uh, it's uh, provided here for oxygen nitrogen well, <laughs> I don't know what K2 is maybe potassium or something like that in gaseous form of course um, and uh, yeah, 
there's quite a lot of information about this type of discharge. If you use uh, Google Scholar and uh, type electrical string discharge, you can find lots of papers uh, ranging from about 1900 to uh, 1960s, describing the properties of this discharge, its uh, theory, and lots of other stuff like that, including, by the way, papers from J.J. Thompson. So yeah, for anyone interested in uh, this information, it's uh, readily available on the internet. You can find uh, lots of info about the electrical string discharge. And uh, what's more, this discharge is actually used uh, uh, today in, uh, you know, induction lamps. Um, you can Google it and uh, it's like this ring sh shaped lamp and uh, it has a gas inside, which uh, is ionized by high-frequency magnetic field. Well, high-frequency electric field that is induced by high-frequency magnetic field. And uh, it's really also the same discharge. It's a plasma toroid, an electrode string discharge. Um, the configuration of the field is uh, a little bit different because uh, in uh, induction lamps they have ferrite cores, uh, and uh, there's not an air coil, the coil is not an air cord one. And uh, I think they do that to increase the coupling between the high frequency source and the uh, plasma. So they, don't, so they don't need to apply such high voltage to the lamp. But uh, yeah, it's like, you can Google it, it's a standard device. And uh, also there's been a recent video from Denis you know, Zilli Popper on YouTube, where he's shown a neon induction lamp. And it's a really beautiful thing. So you probably would want to go and check that out too. Mm, let's see what else I wanted to say. Nope, I think it's pretty much it. So, yeah, mm, there's lots of information about this so-called plasma toroid. That's actually an electrodless ring discharge. Mm, for anyone interested, just Google it in Google or Google Scholar. You'll find lots of papers and uh, lots of information. And uh, I think that's all I wanted to say. So, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.